was Yubel about to defeat Jaden in Return of the Supreme King by TGS Anime? Jaden versus Yubel. Yubel wants to mash every single dimension together into one using super polymerization. Jaden, obviously, wants to stop that. Today yeah. we have two back to back duels to analyze Jaden versus Yubel possessing oh. Jesse, and Jaden versus Yubel in the final duel. So, without further ado, let's jump into the duel. That's a big one to cover. That's a double dose. Oh my god. Yeah, because there were two back to back, and it was quite literally back to back. The GX season three finale was wild. The duel begins and Jesse goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of advanced crystal beast cobalt eagle, rainbow dark dragon, advanced dark, crystal release, M force, and last trick. He's oh my god, this is back when you actually drew going first. Woo, god, that is... That hasn't been a thing in years. He starts by playing his field spell, Advanced Dark. Now, while this card remains on the field, anytime he would take battle damage, he can instead send an Advanced Crystal Beast from his deck to the grave to make the damage zero. He summons his Advanced Crystal Beast Cobalt Eagle to the field and ends his turn. I like how Advanced Dark works narratively because Jesse, you know, he, he likes his Crystal Beast, right? But when possessed by Yubel, as you have... How was it? Uh, how Johan, right? You have uh, possessed Jesse. He doesn't really care for them. It's even shown in the fight where he's like, I'll teach you how to do this. Oh, but that's tax going to do nothing when Topaz Tiger attacks later. And it's like, I'm just here to remind them who's in charge here, right? It is a way that narratively explains that Yubel really doesn't give a crap about the Crystal Beasts and is willing to discard them to further their own game plan, which is great characterization. I like it from a narrative standpoint. And it, it does it helps further the duel and speed the duel up because, you know, I'm gonna attack right into you, you know, activating advanced my advanced dark field spell, gonna take and crystal beast, send it to the grave, and it helps further the game plan of getting Rainbow Dark Dragon out eventually. It's honestly quite brilliant from a like writing standpoint and also from like a card design standpoint. Right off the bat, you'll notice that some of the other cards that he had in his hand probably would have been worth setting face down. M-Force, it's a quick play spell. If mm -hmm. he flips that up, he can increase the attack of one of his monsters by 500 and do piercing battle damage. That's a cool effect. Mm -hmm. Or even better, last trick, the ability to steal an opponent's spell card before it goes into the grave. That sounds kind of cool. Why didn't he set these cards face down? It turns out that Jesse, Ubel, ultimately wants to get her hands on super polymerization. Yeah. And so Yubel purposefully holds on to last trick throughout the entire duel, waiting for the opportunity to steal super polymerization. But for now, it's Jaden's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Bastinatrix, Elemental Hero Neos, Polymerization, Neo Space Road, and Common Sacrifice. Despite hesitating due to his fear of fusion, Jaden overcomes this and plays Polymerization to fuse his Avion and Bastinatrix to make Flame Wingman. It's such a good duel because this is Jaden finally really making peace and overcoming uh, the trauma from being the Supreme King, right? Did some pretty bad stuff as a Supreme King, right? It's why uh, when he opens um, in his duel with Zane, right? He draws polymerization. He's making subpar moves like he's playing Clayman in attack mode. He is, for all intents and purposes, traumatized by the events of that because polymerization really when he was, uh, you know, uh, Supreme King, right? Super polymerization was a catalyst for him to do just unspeakable horror <laughs> war crime status, right? And it's such a cool duel because it shows his growth over the arcs, um, willing being able to move on from that trauma, from the events that happened, and being able to, you know, uh, pick up the you know the fight one more time. It's it's great. Jaden attacks Cobalt Eagle. It is destroyed. However, Jesse sends an advanced crystal beast, Emerald Tortoise, from his deck to the grave to nullify the damage thanks to his field spell. Cobalt Eagle's effect then kicks in, which causes it to be placed in the spell and trap zone instead of going to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And since this monster didn't go to the grave, Flame Wingman's effect doesn't trigger, so no additional damage is done. Mm -hmm. Jaden ends his turn by setting Common Sacrifice face down. It's Jesse's turn and he draws Advanced Crystal beast sapphire pegasus he summons it to the field and activates its effect to place one advanced crystal beast from his deck into his spell and trap zone 
He chooses Ruby Carbuncle. When Ruby Carbuncle is placed in the Spell and Trap zone, its effect activates, which allows itself to special summon itself to the field. Mm. Then Ruby Carbuncle's second effect kicks in. When it is special summoned to the field, it special summons as many other Crystal Beasts in the Spell and Trap zones as well. Jesse then activates his Crystal Release, equipping it to Sapphire Pegasus. This increases its attack 800. by 800. Mm -hmm. Now, with enough attack, Sapphire Pegasus destroys Flame Wingman. Jaden takes the first damage of the duel. With no, you you kind you kind of see like uh, modern isms of the Yu-Gi-Oh game in that play, right? You're gonna have your normal summon. Your normal summon is going to uh, allow you to make your plays, um, and you're and then obviously the equip spell. Certain decks still run equip spells, right? But uh, it, it's very reminiscent of like you know, drop Alistair response, no response. Alistair grab invocation. Oh, by the way, I also had a magical meltdown. Activate magical meltdown. Response? No ash? Okay. Grab another Alistair from my deck. Invocation? Question <laughs> mark? And you can kind of see a, a through line of the design then through modern design as well. Like it, it, the design, in, the increase in design, increase in power creep, um, feature creep as well. Like you can see where that came from and how it progressed as the game went forward. Monsters left. Cobalt Eagle and Ruby Carbuncle attack directly. Jesse ends his turn. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Neospatian Grand Mole. He summons it to the field. Now, since it's Jaden's main phase and Jesse controls three monsters, Jaden has the requirements to activate his face down trap common sacrifice. With its effect, he can send the two weakest monsters on Jesse's side of the field to the grave, and this will allow him to special summon one level seven or higher monster in his hand. Cob can you imagine? It's just like, it's just... <laughs> it's just kaiju in a trap card. I kind of love it. Well, not really. Kind of, right? Because you're tributing to, right? Tributing to to summon your own thing. But instead of summoning it to their field, instead of them getting the monster, you just get it. <laughs> I kind of like the design on that. Bolt Eagle and Ruby Carbuncle go to the grave, and elemental hero Neos is summoned to the field. Jaden enters his battle phase and uses Grand Mole to attack Sapphire Pegasus. Bonk. Due to Grand Mole's effect, both monsters are bounced back to the hand before damage. Mm. However, since Crystal Release was equipped to Pegasus, it is sent to the grave. Its second effect triggers, placing another advanced Crystal Beast in the Spell and Trap zone. This time, Amber Mammoth. With no monsters left, Jaden attacks directly with elemental hero Neos. Jaden sets Neos Space Road face down and ends his turn. It's Jesse's turn and he draws Crystal Beacon. He resummons mm -hmm. Sapphire Pegasus and uses its effect to place Amethyst Cat into his spell and trap zone. Mm -hmm. Jesse then activates Crystal Beacon. Since he has two Crystal Beasts in his spell and trap zone, he can special summon one Crystal Beast from his deck. He chooses Topaz Tiger. Now, since there are seven different advanced Crystal Beast monsters on Jesse's field and in his grave, he is able to summon his Rainbow Dark Dragon. Unfortunately, due to Rainbow it's Dark cool Dragon's design. effect, it cannot use any of its effects the turn it is summoned. It's such a cool design. I know um, there are a couple design isms. Let me pull them up really quick. Uh... So there's a couple things. Unironically, I ended up looking like you, Bell, more than anything, right? Um, in terms of my model design. But Shadow Dragon and Rainbow Dark Dragon, both of them in tandem, actually were uh, kit model material. So these were actually reference sheets that were part of the references that I sent my uh, modeler, right? Shadow Dragon, L5R, Emperor Edition. Huge inspiration for what I do. I like it. It's such a cool, that's why I labeled myself the Shadow Dragon VTuber, right? The, the, if you were curious where that came from, Shadow Dragon Emperor Edition, you're welcome. Uh, but a Rainbow Dark Dragon as well. I kind of just like the aesthetic. I think it's great. Um, unironically, uh, I also like, this This didn't go into the main model, but I also like Shinryu's design from 14. So you you can see that I kind of have a preference for dragon models, and I'm curious how, it act how I'm actually going to work with that going forward. So... Jesse enters his battle phase and attacks Neos. Mm -hmm. It is destroyed. Jesse then attempts to go for game by attacking with his two other crystal beasts. However, Jaden plays his set Neo Space Road. Since Neos was destroyed by battle, he can immediately end the battle phase and draw a card. The card Jaden draws is instant Neo Space. Mm -hmm. Jesse ends his turn by setting M Force face down. It's back to Jaden, and he draws Convert Contact. 
Jaden activates it. This allows him to send Neospatian Grand Mole from his hand and Neospatian Flare Scarab from his deck to the graveyard to allow him to draw two new cards. He draws Elemental Hero Bubble Man and the Flute of Summoning Karibo. Jaden summons Bubble Man, and since there are no other cards on the field when it was summoned, Bubble Man's effect allows him to draw two new cards. Dude, I wish it was that way. I think that if heroes were printed in modern times with modern Yu-Gi-Oh rules, like modern Yu-Gi-Oh design philosophy, I think Bubble Man would have been printed this way. The fact is that Bubble Man, when it went out, when it actually got printed, had a huge restriction. I think it had to be what the only card on your field and in your hand. I have to think. Give me a second. Uh, Elemental Hero Bubble. I mean, Bubble Beat was a thing for a hot minute, right? Like it definitely got power crept out of the game. Uh, da, 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 da. if this is the only card in your hand, you can special summon it from your hand. Okay, that's the special summon condition. When this card is summoned, you can draw two cards. You must control no other cards and have no cards in your hand to activate and resolve this effect. It's the second one there. It is the fact that the uh, condition is also um inclusive of you having uh, no other cards in your hand. If it didn't, maybe Bubble Man will still see modern play. I don't know if that's going to happen though. He draws Cocoon Party and Contact. Jaden sets the Flute of Summoning Karibo face down and ends his turn. It's Jesse's turn and he draws something. This card is something. never revealed, never played, and ultimately doesn't really matter in the duel. So let's just say it's Gem Burst. Okay. Jesse immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Bubble Man with Sapphire Pegasus. It is destroyed. He then attempts to go for game by attacking directly with Rainbow Dark Dragon. However, Jaden plays the Flute of Summoning Karibo to special summon Wing Karibo in defense. A replay occurs and Jesse uses mm -hmm. Rainbow Dark Dragon to destroy Wing Karibo. Wing Karibo's effect then kicks in. Since it was destroyed, Jaden will take no further battle damage this turn. That's the thing that kind of confuses me about Duelist Kingdom whenever I go back and watch it. Like, I was watching Duelist Kingdom, Battle City. I was watching uh, even uh, Battle City Finals, right? And there's a lot of instances in the original Duel Monsters anime where the field state changes, but the attack still goes through, or the attack still does what it was originally intended to do. And part of that's just animeisms, right? It's still early Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Um, what ends up happening... Uh, in reality is when your feel when the board state changes uh, a replay of battle can occur so for instance if i were to say if i had a uh, dark magician right and my opponent had a blue eyes white dragon right and i were to say uh, oh well i can just attack into it and i attack into you know blue eyes white dragon with uh dark magician right and then my opponent activates okay uh, uh when attack when my opponent declares an attack special summon another blue eyes from my grave so now my opponent has two blue eyes on the field now I can recall my, you know, I can, I have another chance to replay a battle. I can either choose to continue to attack the same one I was attacking, or I can see about attacking the other one, or I can just outright say, no, I'm not going to attack anymore, right? Dark Magician into Blue Eyes, obviously stat wise, that's not how that would work unless I have something backing it up, something to actually make my Dark Magician stronger to beat 3k, but that's how that works in essence. It works because when the field state changes, you are allowed to have a replay battle to choose a different target, uh, maintain the same target, or call off your attack entirely. That that's why Duelist Kingdom just there's there's many reasons that gives me an aneurysm. And as people have correctly pointed out, Duelist Kingdom was kind of designed as like an RPG with cards as a supplemental thing to it. And I totally understand that. I understand the design philosophy in it. It just frustrates because I played the modern game, and it's kind of just like that's not how that works. That that's not. Why are you attacking the moon? That's not how that works. You can't attack the quick play spell or not the, the equip spell. That's not that doesn't make sense. But I, I love it still. It, it's great. It's very memeable. In this we get a little bit of out of duel stuff. Wing Karibo's light allows the crystal beast to be purified for a moment so they can commune with uh, Jaden. They basically say to free us, you need to get rid of the advanced dark field spell. And also if you want to save Jesse, you need to purify Rainbow Dragon. New Bell is not very impressed about his monsters communing with Jaden, yeah. so he decides to punish them by forcing Topaz Tiger to attack despite no damage being dealt. Right. Rebo's effect backfires on the monster, hurting it. Jesse ends his turn. And it is here that Jesse missed two opportunities for victory. But I, th I did think I found one of these. I think he had another monster he could attack with. I don't know the second one, but this was definitely a misplay. How I hear you cry. Well, let's get into it. First, Jesse had his M-Force quick play spell face down. Its effect, if activated, lets him select one face up crystal beast monster he controls, it gains 500 attack, and mm -hmm. then if it attacks a defense position monster, 
inflict piercing battle damage. So right. that would have meant that when Sapphire Pegasus attacked the defense position Bubble Man, if Jesse would have waited till the damage step, flip this card up, increase its attack by 500, deal piercing battle damage, 2300 attack, minus 1200 defense, yep. that equals 1100 points of damage. Mm -hmm. Jaden's got like 300 life points left. Yeah. That would have been game. But let's just say he missed this. Oh no, I've, I've made a mistake. I could have done that. Wait a right. minute, I've got a second chance of doing this. Now, when Jaden summons his Wing Karibo, Jesse could have simply canceled his attack with Rainbow Dark Dragon and instead attacked with Topaz Tiger. Flip mm -hmm. up the M-Force. Karibo's effect doesn't stop damage until after it's destroyed, right. so damage calculation would still be applied. Jesse would have won again. So this is where narrative, uh, narrative trumps gameplay mechanics. Which is, it's great. I mean, it's anything humanizing for these characters, right? Yubel wants to prolong this, wants to make Jaden suffer. Like, that's kind of their MO, right? To suffer as they did because due to the light of destruction, you know, oh, well, to to um, show that you care and love somebody, you have to make them suffer, right? Like how Jaden cared and loved for Yubel and, you know, sent them to space, despite Yubel not wanting to go to space. Th thanks, Kaiba, for sending cards into space, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it just, it, it's miscommunications and warring um points of view and it really leads to an interesting dynamic it's why Yu-Gi-Oh gx is still to this day one of my favorite anime like ever it's it's great it's deep when you look at it i watched the dub don't get me wrong we got some dub isms right what is it the uh uh little little belowski right something like that talking about oh if you've never heard the dub for little belowski you're in for a treat dude talks about the man <laughs> the man's got you wearing these colors it's a symbol of the system man dude I didn't get that till I got older. It's so funny. The Moki Moki episode goes way too hard. Um, but no, this is a this is a narrative Trump's gameplay. Yubel is not in it to win it. They are in it to grab super polymerization, which you could argue, well, if they defeated Jade, then they could get super poly. Yes, that is a thing that you can do, right? We see Adrian's dual disc along with the Exodia pieces kind of on the ground uh, before this fight because, you know, they took him out. Um, but that's not Yubel's MO. They want to inflict max emotional damage to Jaden. The question then becomes, was this a huge misplay? Well, Yubel already established that she wanted both duelists to give their all and not hold back. Right. So by that logic, yeah, Yubel made a mistake. However, I'm going to argue against that. Keep in mind that Yubel is a villain. Villains tend to be big liars. What could Yubel gain from forcing Jaden to go all out? Oh yes, the activation of super polymerization and the requirements she needs to obtain said super polymerization. So, so that's actually interesting to consider as well at the end. Um, last trick is activated after super poly resolves. When you activate super poly by discarding one card from your hand plus cost, which is important, uh, <laughs> it cannot be responded to. It is, I, I love it. Bro, I was like, it was like, I was in like senior, junior of high school, 2011, 2012. And I looked at that and I'm like, dude, this card's going to get banned at some point. Like, this is actually good. Lo and behold, shit all format gets banned. Yeah, there you go. You bell could have won here, but she chose not to. It's Jaden's turn and he draws O Oversoul. He activates Cocoon Party. This lets him special summon Chrysalis monsters from his deck for each Neo Spatian in his grave with a different name. Since there are two in his grave, Grand Mole and Flare Scarab, Mm. He summons his Chrysalis Dolphin and Chrysalis Chicky. Following this, he plays Contact. This sends all Chrysalis monsters on the field to the grave and then special summons their upgraded forms from his deck. He summons Neospatian Aqua Dolphin and Neospatian mm. Air Hummingbird. Jaden then activates Air Hummingbird's effect, gaining 500 life points for every card in Jesse's hand. Since he has two, he gains a thousand life points. Jaden then activates- I like how instrumental Air Hummingbird is. Because like it, it, it comes in so clutch in seasons two and three, where he just regains a metric ton of life points. It's honestly great. Also, that I feel like there there should have been like this Neos fusion. I, I can't remember. Like there's not it, like there's just a spot there. I can't remember any sort of like you know air Neos. Just do, doesn't quite ring a bell. Ring a bell to me, right? Like it, it, it'd be cool if there was a fusion in that slot, but they're definitely just it's, it's just missing. It's just a blank to me. I think it's a blank to Konami as well. O Oversoul to special summon elemental hero Neos from his grave. He contact fuses his Neos 
Aqua Dolphin and Air Hummingbird together to summon elemental hero Storm Neos. It's so good. Immediately, he activates Storm Neos' effect, which destroys all spells and traps on the field. It's just heavy Advanced storm. Advanced Dark and M-Force are sent to the grave. Now, since Advanced Dark is no longer on the field, all of the Advanced Crystal Beasts on the field are sent to the grave. So you look at this, this is just marketing, right? Elemental Hero Storm Neos, right? That is quite literally just, hey, this is Jaden's new card. You should buy our Yu-Gi-Oh product, right? That'd be no, it's it's no different than, um, was it Grand Mole, Flare Scarab, and Neos Fusing? Can't remember what, the, what, the, what that one's called. It's not Terraform, that's an Elemental Hero. That's another one. Um, I think it's Grand Neos. But like, yeah, like, it, it's just marketing. We understand why they play these things. We understand why they have new power cards. Buy our new set, wink, wink, like Chaos Neos, right? That was on uh, a cover of a set, right? But it's written in a way that even though it's obvious, it's actually really cool to see. And it's super predictable. Like, oh, how are they going to get out of this next situation? Oh, why well, have this new card? It is quite literally no different than every other shonen anime where, well, I have this secret technique, right? Where, you know, Sasuke pulls out the Chidori, right? He pulls out Chidori uh, to uh, uh, pierce Gara Sand Shield. Um, you have things like Bleach where he uh, gets, you know, his Bankai. It's a shonen trope. Understand it's a shonen trope. Yes, it's cheesy. We love it. We love games like Resident Evil 4 because they're cheesy and campy. Jaden activates instant Neo space and equips it to Storm Neos, making it so that it can stay on the field during the end phase. Unable to attack over Rainbow Dark Dragon, Jaden ends his turn. Wait a minute, Jaden couldn't get over Rainbow Dark Dragon? Well, why not just summon Storm Neos into defense? Could have saved yourself some life points when it gets attacked next turn. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not a big deal really though, is it? Because he knows he has enough life points to tank the attack. Yeah. Oh, but wait, it's actually a huge deal. Ubel is ultimately going to play a card that deals 1,000 thousand thousand damage to both players' life points. Well, it's kind of like the concept of, I play Ubel, right? Like, I picked, I'm picked. i enjoying the deck. It's so good. I'm so glad I watched TGS Anime's video on the Ubel support. Oh, my God. It's so good. I love it. But, like, it's why there's reasons why you would put Phantom of Ubel when you special summon it in defense mode versus just putting it in attack mode, right? Like, there's considerations you make. Yeah, you can hypothetically bounce damage back to your opponent, right? Especially if you have, like, Nightmare Pain up, right? But, like, what if your opponent, I don't know, Dark Ruler no mores you? What if they somehow negate your effect? Well, you're just going to eat that 4K body. Had Jaden summoned his Storm Neos into defense this turn, he would have saved enough life points so that if Ubel did choose to use that card later in the duel, it wouldn't have killed him. In fact, it would only would have killed Ubel. Mm -hmm. So Jaden would have won the duel. You could say then, oh, well, probably Ubel wouldn't have activated that card. Well, the thing is, Jaden's going to get out Rainbow Neos, and he would have won. So, yeah, huge misplay Jaden. You just cost yourself the duel. It's That's a one-to-one -one misplay then, because Ubel misplays, now Jaden misplays. So both players, you know, showcase what they want to do, but potentially their uh, their uh, inability to make the proper plays at all times, right? And I guess attack stat is to, you could argue from a marketing standpoint, that's to show off how strong it is along with its effect. So it kind of falls into this neat, like, from a marketing standpoint, from a cool factor, being an attack just makes sense. Jesse's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws Thousand Buster. Since there are no Crystal Beasts on the field, Jesse is unable to use Rainbow Dark Dragon's effect to boost its attack. Regardless, he attacks and destroys Storm Neos. Mm -hmm. As instant Neos space was equipped to it and was sent to the grave, Jaden can special summon Neos from his deck. Jesse ends his turn by setting his last trick and Thousand Buster traps face down. It's Jaden's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws Fifth Hope. He activates it immediately, allowing him to return five elemental heroes in his grave back into his deck to draw two new cards. Mm. He draws Contact Out and Super Polymerization. Jaden activates it by discarding his Contact Out. Now he can fuse using both sides of the field. And on top of that, super polymerization and the monster that is summoned cannot be responded to by monster, spell, and trap effects. Jaden fuses his elemental hero Neos with Jesse's Rainbow Dark Dragon. He summons out Rainbow Neos, the personification of Jaden and Jesse's friendship. This act purifies Rainbow Dragon and purges Ubel from Jesse's body. Before Jaden can attack for game, Ubel reveals one final move. 
You see, before Jaden played Super Polymerization, she had activated her trap, Last Trick, which causes the next spell to be used to be added to her hand instead of going to the grave. Due to this, she received Super Polymerization. Now with Super Poly in hand and her goal complete, she plays her second trap, Thousand Buster. By paying 1000 life points, she can inflict 1000 damage to both players. Both players' life points drop to zero, and the duel ends it's a in tie. a draw. For yeah. me, this duel is pretty simple. Yes, Jaden was about to win in the final turn. However, Ubel was in control of the majority of this duel and set all this up so that she could get super polymerization in the end game, had an opportunity to win in the middle, and Jaden did have an opportunity to win, but he messed it up. So Ubel Jesse definitively won this duel. However, yeah. we have one final duel to go over. I can, I can agree with that. I can agree with that analysis. Like, at the end of the day, it was a tie. There was a misplay on both sides. Um, yeah, I mean, Ubel, in, in the end, in the macro grand scheme of things, was able to obtain Super Poly after resolution, right? It cannot respond to the activation, but it responded to uh, resolution, right? Instead of going to the graveyard, and went to Ubel. And that's where that gets into, like, narrative, narrative trumping gameplay mechanics, right? Where, well, I mean, you're just going to take my card? Bro, what? <laughs> Um, but it's a good fight. I like it. There's a lot that goes into it. A lot of uh, uh, story that goes into it. It's honestly really cool. And the fact that um, the fact that TGS anime is going over uh, late GX and they're using the JP footage, I think that's for copyright too. I would be very curious on what is it? Not darkness. That too. Darkness at the end of season four, but against um, Night Shroud 2.0 in season four. The clear world shenanigans. That would be, I think that'd be a fun analysis. The final duel begins, and Ubel goes first. She draws, and her opening hand consists of Samsara Lotus, Spell Chronicle, Sinister Seeds, Regenerating Rose, and two mysterious cards. I love that Samsara Lotus wasn't banned because of Ubel, because it was used in other things, like actual power card. Get used to mysterious cards, because that's going to be a running theme throughout this duel. She's going to draw so many cards, I'm going to say to you, I don't know what it is, because she'll never use it. Never activate it, never discard it, never do anything with it. But it's actually just the Ash Blossom. You Bell misplays didn't actually drop the Ash Blossom. <laughs> Get that Ghost Ogre in there. I don't know what to, I don't know what a hand trap is. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> or or it's, or it's, uh, or you Bell's actually being a uh, you know a rel a actually good player and running multiples of their cards. So you just have a second Simsara Lotus. <laughs> You have used like third copy of like <laughs> you Bell Ultimate Nightmare. <laughs> Brick City. <laughs> we'll theorize why a little bit later. You Bell starts by summoning Samsara Lotus into it. Oh, right, right, right. No, no, no. It's the levels one through 12. Pack. She sets Sinister Seeds face down and then activates the continuous spell, Spell Chronicle. Now, by banishing five cards from her deck, each time Jaden activates a spell card, Spell Chronicle will gain one counter, with a maximum of two at a time. During Who remembers when Spell Chronicle was actually teched into Shadal? Because Shadal are actually spellcasters, right? Man, that was a format. Her main phase is she can remove two counters from the card, to add one of those banished cards to her hand. However, Jaden is the one who picks. The five cards she banishes are Zero Sprite, Fiend Rose, Mystical Space Typhoon, Grinder Golem, Grinder Golem? and Super Polymerization. Grinder Golem, man, a card that I used when I was running Plasma Turbo back in Legacy of the Valiant format. Good God, dude. Grinder Golem out tokens, drop Destiny Hero Plasma. It wasn't good. It was really funny, though. Also, a card that's banned now. Because it's actually just value. <laughs> Ubel ends her turn. It's Jaden's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Bastinatrix, Nex, Polymerization, Defusion, and Spark Blaster. He activates Polymerization. As he does, Spell Chronicle gets its first counter. He fuses his Bastinatrix and Avion together to make Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Right. Jaden attacks Samsara Lotus. As it is destroyed, Ubel activates her Sinister Seeds. Now, by reducing the damage from the attack by multiples of 1,000, she can convert that damage into Sinister Seed tokens for every 1,000 damage she would have took. So I actually like this, and through both uh, both duels, you're going to notice 
Jaden starts out with, you know, like Flame Wingman. He starts out with his elemental heroes. And as the duel progresses, he swaps to Neo Spatians. And then at the end is when you start getting those more modern cards like Rainbow Neos and stuff like that, right? It's an interesting progression of his character from a narrative standpoint, right? Where season one, he shows up, beats Crowler in the uh, uh, in the arena, right? In the um, uh, uh, the exams with Flame Wingman, right? That's kind of his old thing. And then season two, after the Light of Destruction tried to get at him, he picked up his Neo Spatians, right? And, you know, you start seeing that progression as well later. So it's a really cool character progression when you look at this narratively as the duel progresses. Since the damage was 2,100, 2,000 damage is converted into two tokens. Mm -hmm. And the remaining 100 is actually Delta's damage. Flame Wingman's effect does activate, however, since Samsara Lotus had zero attack and defense, it dealt no damage. Jaden sets his defusion face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws something. This card is never revealed, never shown, and never played. Oh well. Yubel sacrifice. <laughs> she drew Gem Knight Garnet. <laughs> well, we found the Garnet. Spices her two Sinister Sea tokens to summon a regenerating rose. Yubel enters her battle phase and attacks Wingman. The effect of regenerating rose activates, which allows it to match the attack of any attack position monster it battles with. Jaden retaliates by using his set Defusion. This gives Yubel the second counter for Spell Chronicle. Flame Wingman is returned back to the extra deck and Avion and Bastinatrix are summoned back to the field into defense. Since regenerating rose can only gain attack, from attack position monsters, mm. she's forced to end the battle phase. Over with two counters on Spell Chronicle, Yubel removes them both to force Jaden to add one of the cards to her hand. Jaden chooses Zero Sprite. Yubel ends her turn. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Elemental Hero Sparkman. Jaden summons Sparkman and then equips Spark Blaster to it. Now he can change the battle position of a monster on Yubel's side of the field. Jaden targets Regenerating Rose and switches it to defense. Now unable to protect itself, Jaden attacks and destroys Regenerating Rose with Sparkman. It is destroyed. Can we just point out, Sparkman, you have a Spark Blaster. I get that it's your equip spell and you use that to change battle positions. He just said, bro, I have this gun though. Nah, I'm gonna put this gun in my other hand and just shock you with my with my palm. Can, can we just look at that again? Can we just appreciate? Just nah, I have this gun, but I'm not gonna use it. Itself, Jaden <laughs> attacks and destroys regenerating Rose with Sparkman. It is destroyed. However, as it is, its second effect kicks in. Special summoning two regenerating Rose tokens to the field. I mean, to be fair. Was Axel Brody's dual disc not just a gun that fired volcanic scatter shot and volcanic shells at people? We have precedent in the anime, to be fair. <laughs> Jaden ends his turn. It's back to Yubel, and she draws herself. Yubel. She sets God. Zero Sprite face down and then sacrifices her two regenerating rose tokens to summon Yubel. Man, Yubel, why are you so beside yourself? Don't. <laughs> We said that all the time. When I was playing the Naruto CCG, you could get out Toby, Obito, and Madara Uchiha because that this specific Madara did not have named Toby or Obito. You could have all three of them out, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> this is quite the game, isn't it? There, there's no forethought here because the material isn't finished writing. She enters the battle phase and attacks Sparkman. Due to Yubel's effect, she cannot be destroyed by battle. As well, Jaden takes all damage from battles involving Yubel. And so, the 1,600 damage Yubel would have took is reflected back to Jaden instead. Yubel ends her turn. As she does, she activates the effect of Samsara Lotus in the grave, mm. which is, during each of her end phases, it can be special summoned from the grave. However, if it stays on the field, then during her next standby phase, she will receive 1,000 damage. However, this detrimental effect will never come to pass, as she has to use Yubel's maintenance costs. You see, during the end phases, Yubel must tribute one monster or Yubel is destroyed. With Samsara Lotus tributed, Yubel stays on the field. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Hero Barrier. With little options, he switches his Sparkman into defense and sets Hero Barrier face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn and she draws Hate Buster. Yubel sets it face down straight away and then attacks Sparkman with Yubel. Jaden plays his set Hero Barrier to negate the attack. However, Yubel plays her trap, Zero Sprite. Due to this card's effect, it can only be equipped to a zero attack monster. And when it does, that monster can attack 
twice. Yubel attacks again. I, I love how, because that's the card Jaden added to Yubel's hand, right? And you can see, like, even though he tries to, you know, skirt around Super Poly, because that's the I cannot let you bell get Super Poly, right? It just makes the game state worse for him. Killing 1400 damage back at Jaden. You bell ends her turn, resummons Samsara Lotus, tributes it for you bell to stay on the field. It's also interesting how you bell does damage because you bell is intent on hurting Jaden. The more damage she receives, the more damage Jaden takes. Also, a really cool, you know. Fact about the duel, they, they personified it in the cards. It's Jaden's turn and a big moment, as he embraces his gentle darkness and awakens the Supreme King's power. He uses its power to draw Neo Space Wave. He activates it. Now reading this card's effect does make my brain hurt a little bit, uh -huh. but ultimately Jaden's gonna cheat using this card. To the well, is, is it like, what is it? Is it power support frame? What was the card that had a really awful first printing? Uh, YGO, uh, power support frame question. It's a trap card. No, power frame. Dude, that first printing makes my head hurt. Like, I read power frames, like, on Arata, like the original. Dude, it makes my head hurt. Uh, let's see if I can actually read it here. Give me a second. I'm trying to pull it up. There, there are some that... Oof. Oof. Okay. Uh, <laughs> activate only when a face-up monster you control is selected as an attack target by an opponent's monster with a higher attack. Negate that attack and equip this card to your monster that was being attacked. The equipped monster gains attack equal to the difference in attack between the two monsters. Dude, the wording redundancy in this makes my head hurt. <laughs> They did clean it up later with some with uh, with some erratas, right? They they cleaned it up a little bit with the uh, card text. Good God, though, like it, it it is worded in such a way that it makes my brain hurt. Best of my knowledge, if I get this wrong, let me know in the comments. But my interpretation of this effect, this is how Jaden cheats here. Neo Space Wave activate only when the number of Neo Spatian monsters in your deck is greater than the number of monsters you control. Uh -huh. Send all monsters you control to the graveyard. Then special summon Neo Spatian monsters from your deck with attack equal to half of the attack of the monsters sent to the graveyard by this effect. Okay. So this effect means one of two things. Jaden can summon three monsters from his deck whose attacks are equal to half the attack of each of the individual Elemental heroes he sent to the grave. Right. So he so Avion would be five hundred. First, your Sinistrix would be six hundred. Sparkman would be eight hundred if that were the case. Or the three monsters summons combined attack right. would be half the combined attack of the three monsters Jaden sent to the grave. You no, no, his math is right. Like he he brings up a good point. Whose attacks are this special. Activate only when the number of Neospatial monsters in your deck is greater than the number of monsters you control. Okay, sure. Send all monsters you control to the graveyard. Okay, end. Then, special summon Neospatial monsters from your deck with attack equal to half the attack of the monsters sent to the graveyard by this effect. If I had to read that in sequence, it is going to be... all You might you, you can summon as many Neospatial monsters as you want as long as the combined attack of the special summon monsters is half of the combined total attack of the monster sent. So, in this case, if we have Elemental Hero Avion, 1,000, Elemental Hero Bristinatrix, 1,200, right, 22, and Elemental Hero Sparkman, right, 1,600, so that's what, 38, right, 10, 22, 38, right, yeah, 3,800, which means 1,900 would be half of that, right? So you may summon at that point, you may special summon from your deck Neospatian monsters, as many as possible, with the total attack value of 1900. That's how I read that specifically. Summon Neospatian monsters from your deck with attack equal to half of the attack of I the see, monsters I want to see what he, uh, the graveyard what he explains by this effect. I want to see it. So this effect means one of two things. Jaden can summon three monsters from his deck whose attacks are equal to half the attack of each of the individual elemental heroes he sent to the grave, or the three monsters summons combined attack must be half the combined attack of the three monsters Jaden sent to the grave. Are you following me? Okay, so let's look at this. Okay. He sends Bastinatrix with 1200 attack, right. Sparkman with 1600 attack, and Avion with 1000 attack. 
Okay, 3,800 attack, right? Hey, I did my math correctly. Yay. Combined, this is 3,800 attack. Okay. He summons in their place Aqua Dolphin, which is half the attack of Bastinatrix, Hummingbird, which is half the attack of Sparkman, and Glomos, which has 300 attack which is not half of Avion. Together, these three monsters' attacks add up to 1,700. So we have a deficit of 200. But the way it was worded is that it must combine to be half. I, either way you look at this, right? Like, it, there is a deficit here. Hypothetically, if there was a Neospatian with 200 attack, if it's the way that I thought the card was worded, you could still do that and have a fourth, right? But... That isn't... No, there's definitely a deficit here. Like, this is a relevant call-out. Which, again, is not half of 3,800. The problematic monster here... Is Glomox. Is Glomox. It's 200 attack points off, meeting the criteria. So, what's up with this? Is Jaden cheating? Yes, and sort of no. Okay. I know where that 200 attack points is. It's going to come from the next card that Jaden is about to activate. Because oh, of no. next, he will upgrade his Glow Moss into Twinkle Moss. And what right. is Twinkle Moss's attack? 500. 500. Exactly half of Avion's. So this is like a weird thing. It feels as if Twinkle Moss should have been a main deck monster. Yeah. I don't know if there's like a, a manga reason for this or something. They just didn't translate very well. But to the best of my knowledge, Jaden uses this effect wrong. It's technically illegal play. Illegal play, Jaden. There you go. Any yeah, no, that that is you. You would not be able to do that play, even if your end goal puts you to the right mathematical thing. And I think that is kind of an anime. Let's let's gloss over this. Let's fix this. Right? They did end up at that same conclusion. Effectively, Twinkle Moss just being upgraded Glow Moss. Right? You could not make that play because it would be an illegal play. And as far as I'm aware, if a play would be an illegal play, you just can't even activate. You can't even make it in the first place. So, yeah. No, that's a uh, that's an interesting one to consider. Anyway, Spell Chronicle gets another counter. Jaden activates next by tributing Glow Moss to summon his fusion monster, Neospatian, Twinkle Moss. Right. Jaden activates the effect of Air Hummingbird, gaining 500 life points for every card in Yubel's hand. Bird. She has three. So Jaden gains 1,500 life points. Mm -hmm. Jaden enters his battle phase and attacks the Yubel phase. with Twinkle Moss. Its effect kicks in. When it attacks, Jaden can draw one card and then reveal it. Depending on the type of card it is, will result in one of three effects. Monster, the battle phase ends. Spell, the attack becomes a direct attack. Trap, Twinkle Moss is changed to defense. Jaden draws and reveals Space Gift, a spell. And so the attack becomes direct. Jaden ends his battle phase and then activates Space Gift. This allows him to draw one new card for every Neospatian he has. Since he has three, he draws three cards. Nice. The cards drawn are Spiritual Fusion, Arms Hole, and Neo Signal. Note that since Spell Chronicle had two counters, when Jaden activated his third spell, it didn't get another counter because it has it a hard out. limit of two at a time. So, clever play by Jaden. Jaden yeah. sets Neo Signal face down and ends his turn. It's like playing around Max C, right? How do you play around Max C? Your opponent activates Max C. I mean, if you have the OTK on board, or if you have a way to floodgate them, you just go ham, right? Yes, they're going to draw it, like half their deck, right? But it doesn't matter if you can just OTK them or FTK them. <laughs> Same concept. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws zero hole. She removes two counters from Spell Chronicle to add another card. Jaden chooses Fiend Rose to be added to her hand. Yubel enters her battle phase and attacks Aqua Dolphin twice. Yubel sets zero hole and Fiend Rose face down and ends her turn. As she does, Samsara Lotus is summoned and then tributed for Yubel. It's Jaden's turn and he draws Card Ejector. He activates the effect of Air Hummingbird to gain 1500 life points again. He then summons Card Ejector and activates its effect to banish one card in the opponent's grave. He plans to remove Samsara Lotus, but Yubel activates Zero Hole, which negates the effect and then destroys Card Ejector. Ooh. Despite this, since a monster was destroyed, Jaden is able to activate his set Neo Signal. This allows him to special summon a Neo Spatian from his deck. He summons Grand Mole. Jaden then enters his battle phase. 
he attacks Yubel with Grand Mole, intending to return both back into the hand. However, Yubel counters with Hate Buster. Buster. This destroys both monsters and causes Jaden to take damage equal to Grand Mole. Hmm. Despite the damage, Jaden believes, well, at least Yubel is dealt with. However, the it? final effect of Yubel kicks in. Since she was destroyed by an effect other than her own, she special summons from her hand, deck, or grave her upgraded form. Yeah. Yubel Terra Incarnate. I like that Yubel just summons from the deck. Here's you. You know, one of the most egregious forms of summoning in the game. Just, oh yeah, just summoned from your deck. Which modern Yubel support actually does. Like, <laughs> excuse you? You're just saying I can nightmare throw this from the deck. <laughs> this version of Yubel is identical in effect, except it no longer has a maintenance cost. Instead, during the end phases, she destroys all other monsters on her side of the field. And for every other monster she destroys, she can destroy one of Jaden monsters too. Jaden unflinchingly attacks the upgraded Yubel with Twinkle Moths, drawing again for its effect. However, this time he gets a monster, hey, elemental hero, Prisma. Due to this, the battle phase immediately ends. Jaden sets his arms whole face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws another brick. Yubel immediately brick. enters her battle phase and attacks Aqua Dolphin. The damage is reflected back at Jaden. Yubel ends her turn, and as she does, Samsara Lotus returns to the field. Yubel Terra Incarnate's effect kicks in, destroying all other monsters, which destroys Samsara Lotus. Since a card was destroyed, she can also destroy now one of Jaden's cards. She chooses Air Hummingbird. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Polymerization. Which is a smart play, because Air Hummingbird can just every turn proc for life point gain. Just activate 500 per. Thank you. Yes, please. Come again. He sacrifices his Aqua Dolphin to summon Elemental Hero Prisma, putting it into defense. Prisma is a level four, though, I thought. Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't remember it being a level five. Yeah, no, when it got printed, it printed it as a level four. Yeah, no, you use Elemental Hero Prisma because it uh, fusion substitutes. Once per turn, you can be a one fusion monster from your extra deck. Then send one, fusion, uh, send one of the fusion materials whose name is specifically listed on the card from your deck to the graveyard. The card name becomes that sent monster to the end phase. Wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Can you just like reinforce one of the armor? It, it should. If you have something that requires a specific fusion, right? Let's say, I don't know, like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, right? Are you saying you hypothetically could just reinforce one of the army? This reveal blue eyes ultimate from your deck, and this is now treated as a blue eyes white dragon card for name of that fusion. Kind of janky, but kind of hot. It seems like a risky move at first, as Prisma is essential for Jaden's ultimate goal of getting out Rainbow Neos. But uh, he does something quite clever. He enters his battle phase and attacks Yubel with Twinkle Moths. Its effect activates again, allowing Jaden to draw another card which is Fake Hero, a spell, so Twinkle Moss can attack directly. You see, by doing this maneuver, it provokes Yubel. She was already hating on Air Hummingbird for gaining life points for Jaden, so now this monster that's attacking her directly and giving cards to Jaden, she's like, you, you're next. It's Yubel's yeah. turn, and she draws another brick. Yubel brick. enters her battle phase and attacks Prisma. During the that's like, oh man, I'm running both DPE and I'm running uh, Red-Eyes Dark Dragoon, right? Man, well, drew the red eyes. Wow, drew the dark magician. Still no red eyes fusion. Still no vert anaconda. Nothing. I'm just drawing. You just brick city. I love it. It's so good. In phase, Samsara returns, and yet again, it's destroyed by Yubel's effect. Yubel chooses Twinkle Moss to be destroyed. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Elemental Hero Neos. Jaden activates Fake Hero, special summoning Neos from his hand. This gives Spell Chronicle another counter. He then activates Prisma's effect. He can send any fusion material from his deck to the grave to make Prisma become that monster. Jaden well, sends Rainbow Dragon. Jaden plays Polymerization, giving Spell Chronicle its second counter. He fuses his Neos with Rainbow Dragon to make Rainbow Neos. I guess it's fair. If you bell you know, just took his his card. Cool, I'm just gonna slot Rainbow Dragon in here really quick, you know. Still have my tournament legal deck. 
He activates Rainbow Neos' third effect. By sending the top card of his deck to the grave, he can shuffle every card in Yubel's grave back into a deck. Jaden activates his set Arms Hole. Now by milling the top card of his deck, he can add any equipped spell from his deck to his hand. However, he can't normal summon. He adds Rainbow Veil to his hand and equips it to Rainbow Neos. Now with Rainbow Veil equipped to it, any monster Neos battles has its effects negated. And so Jaden attacks Yubel, attempting to go for game. However, Yubel activates her set, <laughs> the Demon Rose. Rose. Added. With it equipped to Yubel, she cannot be destroyed by battle and takes no battle damage from battles involving it. And so Yubel survives the fight. Jaden ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and she draws another brick. Yubel brick. removes two counters from Spell Chronicle to add. Yubel now has. Gem Knight Garnet, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Dark Magician. I don't even remember. I don't even know what other bricks are in this game. <laughs> like they just <laughs> their entire hand. We'll just say left arm of the forbidden one, I guess. I don't know, man. Another card. This time Jaden chooses Mystical Space Typhoon, which might seem like an odd choice as she immediately activates it to destroy Shotguns Rainbow it, yeah. Veil. However, obviously he can't give her super polymerization and grind a golem, Yubel will get two tokens. End phase, pop both the tokens, destroy both the yep. monsters on Jaden's field. It's the Yubel best choice. attacks Rainbow Neos. However, Jaden banishes the Necro Gardener in his grave to negate the attack. Yubel ends her turn, and since Samsara Lotus is no longer in the grave, Yubel doesn't destroy any of Jaden's monsters. It's Jaden's turn, and he draws Fifth Hope. He immediately activates it. This lets him return five elemental hero cards in his grave back into his deck to allow him to draw two new cards. Jaden returns Avion, Bastinatrix, Sparkman, Prisma, and Neos, and then draws elemental hero Clayman, an alchemy cycle. Jaden summons Clayman into defense. He then activates the first effect of Rainbow Neos. By sending a monster to the grave, in this case Clayman, he can return all monsters Yubel controls back into the deck. The play is successful. However, crack. Terror Incarnate's final effect kicks in. Since it was removed from the field, Yubel can summon her ultimate form. Yubel, the ultimate nightmare. Ultimate Nightmare has all of the previous effects. However, now if you bell battles with an opponent's monster, she can inflict damage equal to its attack, and then she destroys it. And not only that, but you bell's hand size limit now becomes 10. Wait, what? Why does she do that? Literally, it has nothing to do with her effect at all. Well, this is a case of, I think they've just added this effect to be like, oh, wait a minute. Yubel yeah. has like a massive hand. You see, in a couple more turns, she's going to surpass the six card hand limit and just keep putting cards in her hand. So I think right. the only reason that the Ultimate Nightmare has this effect is just so that you won't be like, wait a minute, she's not discarding cards at the end of her turn. It's not like she needs to have so many cards in her hand to use like an ultimate effect or something. So... It's weird. It's a weird effect to attack on, but there you go. Jaden and it's relevant for plot reasons at that point, right? Because if if there is cards in hand, right? And that's the thing. If you're writing this and it's like, well, but now since I have more than six cards in my hand, I must I have seven, I must discard, right? Oh, well, what's Yubel going to do? It, it takes the attention away from the plays currently being made is how I look at that. So it makes sense to just kind of tack on a narrative. Yeah, my hand size is now 10, right? This is the ultimate boss monster. Make it feel imposing. Make Jaden feel like, you know, the audience is looking at him like he's backed into a corner, right? Like, no, Ultimate Nightmare does not make your hand size 10. But for this, it, make, it makes sense just narratively to just continue to keep up that momentum, to keep drawing. It's his turn by setting Alchemy Cycle face down. It's Yubel's turn and she draws Chain Material. She enters her battle phase and attacks Rainbow Neos, attempting to go for game. However, Jaden plays Alchemy Cycle, which reduces Rainbow Neos' attack down to zero and prevents it from being destroyed by battle. However, after the battle, Rainbow Neos is banished. Actually, isn't that a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh? If two monsters attack each other with zero attack, it does nothing. Isn't the ruling that because there is no attack value, they just kind of crash into each other and then just nothing happens as far as i'm aware that is the ruling on zero attack versus zero attack and it's actually really funny not only that but Jaden gets to draw one card he draws mirage tube Yubel sets chain material face down and ends her turn it's Jaden's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel 
He draws Elemental Hero Neos. Using the effect of Necro Shade in his grave, Jaden so summons good. Neos without a sacrifice. He then sets his Spiritual Fusion and Mirage Tube face down and ends his turn. It's Yubel's turn, and the final turn of the duel. She draws and gets another brick. <laughs> she immediately enters her battle phase and attempts to go for game by attacking Neos. Wouldn't we have confirmation, and you'll see this later on, I think Giant Germ is technically one of the bricks in their hand, right? Something along those lines. However, Jaden plays Mirage Tube, which negates the attack and then inflicts damage to Yubel equal to Neos' attack. Here we get a dramatic flashback, and Jaden decides to make a hard decision. Due to Mirage Tube, Yubel is able to remove two counters from Spell Chronicle. Mm. She asks Jaden to add one of the cards to her hand. She expects him to add Grinder Golem. However, instead, Jaden chooses Super Polymerization. Yubel is shocked, but ultimately continues with her plan. She activates her set Chain Material. Which chain Material actually exists. I, I So I read through Chain Material. Like, it actually exists. Uh, Let me read through it, because it actually kind of confused me at how good it seems um oh my god that's a lot of text actually so okay we're gonna go here chain material it actually exists i think it's been printed in a single set right anytime you fusion summon a monster this turn you can remove from play from your side of the field deck hand or graveyard Fusion material monster lists on the fusion monster card using this fusion material monster. You can attack during the turn this card is activated. If you use this effect fusion summon, the fusion summon monster is destroyed during the end phase. If you're needing, like, you know, a quick, snappy play, as long as it's named materials, yeah, it's a trap card, but I feel that this is actually kind of strong. Like, it has potential. But once again, it's a trap which kind of holds it back. And then, you know, if you use this effect for fusion summon, this, this is the fusion summon monster is destroyed at the end phase. But, like, I don't know. If you summon like Thousand Eyes Restrict or something like that, get your playoff, and you're able to shuffle it back in. You're able to. Sh I, I I could see like use for it. It was actually really interesting to go through and read, but it's only ever been printed in like a single set. Which lets her use her hand, field, deck, and graveyard to perform a fusion summon this turn. Yeah. She then activates Super Polymerization by discarding one of the bricks in her hand. Yubel declares she will fuse 12 monsters with 12 different levels to fuse the 12 dimensions together. The Which this actually did spark theory of like, well, are the 12 dimensions level related, right? Level one dimension, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Uh, and there's a shot that shows all the cards going up of different levels. Monsters she plans to use for the fusion in level order are Grave Squirmer, Giant Germ, Chaos Core, Phantom of Chaos, Dark Summoning Beast, mm -hmm. Infernal Incinerator, Maju Gazette, Lava Golem, Infernal Flame Emperor, Raviel Lord of Phantasms, Gate Guardian, Gate Guardian. and Yubel the Ultimate Nightmare. Actually interesting to see um, the Infernal Beast there actually. Raviel, Maju Gazette, Lava Golem, Infernal Flame Emperor. Infernal Flame Emperor, that's an odd one there. Didn't Axel play that? Axel played that in uh, Beating Season 3, right? Raviel, Lord of Phantasms, Gate Guardian, and Yubel, the Ultimate Nightmare. However, unbeknownst to Yubel, Jaden had activated a card. He had used his set Spiritual Fusion before she had played Super Polymerization. Now, due to its effect, Jaden is the one who chooses the fusion materials. I like the artwork on the card. I like that we have the evil heroes in the background of that. That's actually kind of cool. Like, so the, the timing on this is relevant because super polymerization, you cannot respond to its activation. But it's if it's before the activation, it's fine. And thus you get into the narrative like, well, I activated this before you did this, which is used very sparingly, I would argue. But when it's used, it's used for plot effect. And so for this summon, Jaden chooses to fuse his and Yubel's soul together. This act unites Yubel with the Supreme King forever, fulfilling her wish and also preventing the destruction of all existence. The duel ends with no clear victor. Instead, Yubel embraces Jaden. Honestly, an incredible and really memorable finale to a duel yep. and a great example of self-sacrifice for the greater good. I know I said there was no definitive winner, but we, we do one. see in the background Neos fusing with Yubel as well, since Neos is technically like Jaden's soul, essentially, right? So if this is the case, then super polymerization would most likely have fused Neos with Yubel, 
to make either Elemental Hero Neos Kluger, if it was the real world version, or mm. most likely the anime version Neos Wise Man. Wise Man. And with that monster on the field, Jaden could have attacked directly the game. In my eyes, in the second duel, Jaden is the definitive winner. It really annoyed me how many times that Ubel drew and never did anything with those cards. Right. So it, the only logical reason is because she wanted to unite the 12 dimensions. So she had to play loads of like high level monsters, yeah, like bricks. Gate Guardian and stuff. That was a bit weird. So perhaps she had a lot of bricks in the deck, basically. I'm going to say that the seven cards she drew that she never used, these are what they were. Gate Guardian, Suijin, Kazijin, Sanga, Raviel, Uriah, Uriah, and Herman. I Buy these that. because, well, we know she has pretty much all of these in her deck. Yeah. It makes sense if she had them in her hand, she wouldn't be able to summon them because she never had enough materials after she got Ubel out. So yeah, right. with that, that was Jaden versus Ubel. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. And if you like this series, subscribe to the channel. You know what? I'll make more. Catch you later, everyone. No, I mean, it's interesting. It is an interesting fight, uh, both of these duels. And I actually want to commend Tejas Anime for making a video on this. One, it, This was the final duel that the U.S. audience got to see. This is the end of season three. Season four never got a dub. Uh, I think what from what I understand, they went, or what I remember, they went from season three dub right into 5Ds. And there was like, oh, well, it's, it's de development hell. It's, you know, X reason, Y reason. I don't think we ever actually got an actual reason for it but i do know that you know we we stopped at season three season four you have to watch you know subbed which it's good i liked it season three expands on a lot um it actually showcases uh jaden's growth uh jaden throughout the series has the main character effect of everyone relying on the main character he finally gets the you know ability to just say you guys need to you know figure this out yourselves you guys need to like you know figure out your own lives grow up a little bit um, it's good. It's a really fulfilling, uh, really, really fulfilling uh, season. But if you haven't checked out TGS Anime, you should definitely go check out TGS Anime. I have kept you for an hour. If you watched all the way, thank you, you absolute legends. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did you notice something in this, uh, in me reacting to it, that you didn't before? Did you, uh, do you also agree that this is, you know, kind of a awesome banger of a finish? Do you remember the, uh, the alleged F word slip up? That uh, that you Bell does in the middle of the duel, the alleged right. I think I can't remember what they say exactly, but it's not what people hear. Misheard lyric status, but uh, definitely check out, check them out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.